Last December, I was in a little church that had started three years ago because I had to go to Malawi for one believer, a man called Duncan. And God answered their prayer for rain within an hour in that devastating drought where three people were already dead. Because the Lord answered their prayer for rain within an hour, the entire community became Christians, 2,000. They have built a church, and I had the privilege to preach in that church last December. And I get diarrhea. And so I'm determined to speak, and I just speak what comes into my mouth. And then I am feeling weak and dizzy. I sit down on a chair. I said, those that are sick, come forward. Lay your own hand on your sickness or your pain and receive your healing in Jesus' name. And when you are healed, put your hand in the air. Within a minute and a half, every single hand went up. They were all healed. They went to sit down. Well, they knew that I wasn't feeling well, so they released me. And I played back my tape to find it was the best sermon I've ever given. But I was so sick, I couldn't understand it. I go back to Blantyre, and the next day I said, Lord, why wasn't I healed with the others? I was the only one not healed. And the Lord said, to cause you to depend on me completely and utterly. Suddenly I realized that there was none of me in that meeting. Less of me, more of God, none of me, all of God. And then the Lord said, do not limit me. Let me be God. I said, how am I limiting you, Lord? He took me to Elijah. He said, if Elijah did not soak the sacrifice three times with water and fill the trench with water, he would have limited my miracle. Oh. The next crusade was down on the Mozambican border for five days. Less than 25 people turn up, which sometimes happens, if you're a girl maybe. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. I've given the gospel message. How don't I limit God? Then I knew. And I said, I want you to go out and look for the sickest person in this village and bring her here tonight, or him, here tonight. And then I want you to invite the entire village to come and watch Jesus heal this person. That night, the church is full to capacity. And they bring the sickest person, seriously sick, not out of bed for two years. She could not walk. She could not stand up anymore. Very, very thin, shivering under a gray blanket. I pointed to her. I said, in the name of Jesus, disease, leave that body body be healed in Jesus name strength come back into that body in Jesus name then I said in the name of Jesus stand up and she stood up so now in the name of Jesus walk in front of the church and she walked and she came back and I said now run down the aisle and she looked at me in horror I said in Jesus name you can and she ran down that aisle and back 100% healed well, the entire church, everyone became Christians. The next days, they were coming group after group of people between the services to receive their healing and Jesus into their hearts as Lord and Savior, including two chiefs and two girls, Judith, 14 years old, and Maria, 12 years old, both born deaf and dumb. The Lord opens their ears. They can now learn to speak. Well, I came back to England, and the Lord said, my people are limiting me through unbelief through lack of prayer, through lack of commitment, and by putting other things before me. And then he showed me to Judas. And he said, the moment Judas received the 30 pieces of silver, in that moment, he loved the 30 pieces of silver more than Jesus. He says, my people are doing the same. They are loving their homes more than me, their businesses, their money, their holidays, their sports, their comfort, their lifestyle. Preach repentance. Since January, I have been preaching repentance. And entire congregations have repented. Many, many cry. And then I realize this is the first step into the presence of God. Let's go a little bit further with them. I said, let us thank the Lord for what he has done. Let us praise him for who he is. Let's worship him. And as we come up and 
worship to the Lord, there comes this charged, expectant, active silence where the presence of God comes amongst us. And I always thought that this is how you come into the presence of God. But all of a sudden, something unexpected happened. People began to be healed and set free all over the church in their seats without any laying of hands. And after the prayer time, they came and testified of their healings. Some of them big healings in their seats. And it's Jesus that's doing it. When we truly put God first, above everything, obeying the first commandment of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. He comes down and blesses. He, comes, he answers with fire. He answers with power. He just comes down and does it. You don't have to do a thing. I just watch in amazement, as amazed as anybody else. So this is Jesus. He's alive. <laughs>